Hello, this is Kelso with the Grim Reapers, and I'm here to conduct a hardware review on two items that just arrived. WinWing manufactures FAA Level 5 simulators for the Cessna 172, amongst other general aviation products. For disclosure, WinWing sent me this system along with previous panels for an honest review. They did not ask for or press for favorable comments. And similar to my last review, their statement to me was basically, here's the stuff, what do you think? Today's arrival is their complete FA-18C HOTAS system, consisting of the Super Taurus throttle and startup panel, along with the Super Libra flight stick and base. These products were introduced last year, and several people posted YouTube reviews around that time. I felt it was necessary to research all those interviews, including all the feedback comments for each, to get a feel of what people thought WinWing did right and wrong. While these items were in transit, I asked for a list of hardware and software upgrades completed since its rollout. My thoughts were to provide my perceptions, in addition to what the manufacturer did to correct any deficiencies. You'll see my setup, consisting of the HOTAS system, including the takeoff and combat ready panels, that I reviewed a few weeks ago. I'll talk about the HOTAS system I have owned, and my perceived comparisons using precision scientific gear for calculations. And I'll provide thoughts on SimApp Pro, along with two of their competitors' control software. If you've just watched CAP's unboxing video, my packages arrived in a similar condition. Excellent packaging with no damage on arrival. The system uses three USB cables, about two meters or six feet in length, one for the stick, one for the throttle, and one for the startup panel. If need be, three wooden spacers are provided to help clamp the control mounts to your desk. My tip to assist mounting the throttle is to use the stick shipping box as a temporary platform for the throttle base. After installation, I cut and fit one of the wood mounting pieces to use as a weight relief stand at the end of the throttle housing. Here you can see the takeoff and combat ready panels nestled between the throttle mounts. The stick and throttle mounting was straightforward, but I had an issue with my desk as it has steel tubing running close to the edge, which required adjustments on my part. With copious levels of adult language, I got it figured out. Both stick and throttle are firmly attached to the desk, but my desk lacks crossbars that would dampen some minor shaking when my legs bump the controls. Later, I'll cut scrap angle iron from my shop to solve the desk stability issue with X braces. After plugging in the stick, throttle, and flight panel, I restarted my computer. The controls identified as WinWing F18 startup panel, throttle base F18 handle, and joystick base F18 grip. They were not pre-configured at startup, and required separate binding. This makes sense because all of the controls can be used across other DCS modules. Binding the stick and throttle were generally straightforward. You may choose to run WinWing's SIMAC Pro application while flying the F-18C because some of WinWing's switches need telemetry from DCS to determine the in-game button state of those controls. The reason is DCS provides toggle binds instead of on-off binds for some F-18 controls. In my previous panels review, I dinged WinWing by placing this issue in the cons side of the review. I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I'll plead to the developer, ED, I love DCS and your modules. I own close to all of them. But please, finish the Hornet to include complete switchology. I don't know. Maybe by redirecting resources you're using to pump out lesser needed copies of other frames. The F-14 Alpha being one example. And this comes from an F-14 Bravo module owner. That ends my rant. By the way, SIMAT Pro is not needed when flying other modules. Super Taurus startup panel. At closer inspection, the construction is sturdy metal, finished screws, and all the attached hardware was tight and secure. The startup panel switches are a combination of rotary, two-way, three-way, and momentary. The panel has a combination of both flight controls and startup controls. The Super Taurus throttle base consists of this section and the box. Its metal frame includes lifts for idle, and for afterburner. Now you can push these through. Excuse my shaky desk. 
where you can use the lift. This is a friction for adding friction to this. I like mine completely off. Gives you easy ability to just walk these throttles using your fingertips for wonderful speed control. The right throttle has five way, that's four way and a push, four way and a push, five way, three way speed brake would be off momentary for raising the speed brake that should lock the speed brake and then retract make sure to bind all three for this one additional button in the front is your TDC slew with a depress and this front spring loaded up and down can be used for radar elevation I use mine for zoom in slow, zoom out slow. On the left throttle, there are two button pushes and a three way toggle. I found the throttle travel is far beyond anything I've used previously. The Super Taurus throttle can do minute one knot throttle adjustments so much easier than what I'm used to. I was surprised Cap said he thought the Warthog throttle was similar to the Taurus. I've owned the Warthog. I also have the Verples. I disagree. So much so that I did some calculations. I use these two scientific devices to measure the length and degrees of travel of the arc length and straight line length using the Win Wing Taurus, Thrustmaster Warthog, and Verbal 50 CM2. Here are the screen grabs from the arc length conversion for each. I determine the general fulcrum point of the throttle by triangulation. For the radius, I measure from the fulcrum to the top of each throttle. For central angle, I use a removable top of a compass to eyeball the degree of travel. For the Taurus, I restricted its start point at the idle setting detent rather than the off position and push through to the afterburner. For both the Warthog and CM2, I used all the deflection they could provide without limiting detents. I followed up with a straight line ruler length. You be the judge. The stick's outer casing is aluminum. It feels solid. I like the feel of the finger grooves at the front. The first stage trigger feels good. The second stage takes a bit more pressure to fire. I'll get used to it. The nose wheel steering and paddle switch feel normal. Other than the weapons release button, all of these others are five ways. That's four way and a push. The small four way and depress is new to me. A light brush of the switch in all directions is enough for actuation, as well for the push. It takes very little pressure to activate it. Due to my rig configuration, I set it up side stick. The movement, tension, is buttery smooth. I left everything stock and flew it with no axis tunes. I don't have any complaints. The throttle extension is aluminum and stainless steel. It's adjustable from 130 millimeter to 170, or 5.1 to 6.7 inches. A twist stick attachment for rudders is available. However, you'll find that DCS Helo and Warboard modules really need an effective rudder. Here is the list of upgrades I asked for since last year's rollout. The F-18 stick recce switch, that's a small five-way. Uh, the former switch had a tendency to pop out this has been replaced. Various internal wire connectors changed from solder connections to plugs. The Super Libra base cam surfaces are now polished to a mirror surface, increasing smoothness. The throttle cable was upgraded to underwater marine cables for extreme durability. All desktop mounts were upgraded to increase tightness. The radar elevation firmware control, that's the up and down slider switch on the right throttle. This is now switchable from button to axis and the input rate can be controlled. SIMAP Pro software, firmware update for lighting brightness control, continual SIMAP updates. As much as I hate background apps, SIMAP Pro is the best UI I've used for any controls. Updates aren't scary and there are prompts throughout the process. 
Thrustmaster and Verbal software are much more difficult to navigate, and Verbal software is known to brick controls if not done correctly. Nightmares aplenty can be found on those two. In my previous panels review, I placed the software in the cons section. In this review, I'll leave it out of pros and cons. Pricing at the time of this review for this configuration is $947.75 USD. Shipping cost will depend on your delivery location. Both stick, throttle, and startup panels are of solid construction. The layout of operation critical controls is good to excellent. The hardware appears of high quality. Audio and tactical feedback is positive. Readability and illumination appear good. Mounting hardware is solid. Price appears at par with similar competitive products, though the long throw of the throttle and the startup panel edition makes these features stand out. The con I noted was the up switch on the right throttle COM 5-way. The throttle body has a raised portion which runs around this button, and for me, it restricts my access to actuate the up switch consistently. The forward, back, down, and press work well for me. Everyone's different, so you may not have an issue with it. And this was my sole complaint. I was going to post the review without addressing it with WinWing. I changed my mind and contacted them. They retested inventory and confirmed few random difficulties on a minute number of switches. They decided to change the switch in the next production lot. In the chance your recent purchase has a similar problem, contact WinWing and they'll provide a replacement switch. For immersion, I appreciate the ability to stay as far away from using the mouse in any simulation. Taking hands off the controls to play with a mouse is not natural. Any tactile feedback is vastly superior. This HOTAS and flight panel can be placed in an average user's rig space. I can say that overall, I'm impressed with the HOTAS, and I feel that anyone should consider this system as a potential addition to their rig. P.S. While doing research homework of old reviews and comments, I found one complaint that repeated, including in my recent panel review. Those complaints were based on the panels not being exact duplicates of the Hornet cockpit. Winwing's product line will not recreate a full sim pit experience for the Hornet. It will, however, provide enough of the regularly used Hornet controls to provide buyers a leap towards that goal without spending many thousands and months to years to complete. Oh, and I forgot to add. On Winwing's drawing board is an F-18 Viper throttle attachment. You'll be able to swap it for the F-18 right engine housing. It's still in the conception phase, so there's no release images. They're hoping to complete it in late 2021. This is Kelso, and I thank you for your time.